I'm going to introduce myself. I am Kristen Sorg West, the Director of Marketing here at Yale School Management Edu Executive Education. And this is the webinar for the open house for the Yale's Women's Leadership Program, just to make sure we're all in the right place. We're excited to have so many people on the call today and just answer all of your questions. Um, before we kick things off, just a few housekeeping items. We are recording this webinar and we will be distributing the recording afterwards to all webinar registrants. We encourage you to ask questions through the chat and Q&A throughout the webinar. So we're not going to hold questions until the very end. We're gonna integrate them as we go. I will be moderating both the Q&A and the chat and then fielding questions to our, income, to our featured speakers. We have two other Yale Executive team members on the call today, Rachel Maledo and Joanne Legler. Rachel and Joanne, give a little hi and a hello in the chat when you have a moment. Oh, uh, Joanne popped on. This is great. Hi, Joanne. So Joanne will pop on more if there are other questions that maybe are more appropriate uh, to answer, asking about the application, or not the application, the registration process and preparing to come to campus. We might invite her to come back just to answer some of those questions too. As I mentioned, we're going to ask answer questions along the way. So please consider this time that we have together to be a time for discussion. If you have a question that comes to your mind, I guarantee you someone else on the call has something similar they want to ask. So please pose your questions. We are here to answer them. If you aren't already familiar with the Women's Leadership Program, the program is an on-campus in-person executive program hosted here on campus. It's designed to develop leadership behaviors in women and those who support them, behaviors like building high-performing teams, negotiating, managing crisis, driving innovation, and creating an authentic leadership style. We have two fantastic past participants on the call with us today. You've already heard from them a little bit. I'm so excited to have Nicole Turner and Latoya West Blackwood on the call. They both attended the Women's Leadership Program in June of 2022. So you two already know one another and we're all excited to get to know you both. Just a couple of introductions. I really am looking forward to just reading through all of your bios again. Nicole Turner has been has decades of experience as a senior leader in the financial services, technology, and healthcare industries. She is responsible for MasterCard's global technology hubs by developing strategic solutions which support their customer, employee, and community engagement, culture and future of work, and talent strategies across seven hubs located in North America, Asia Pacific, and Europe. Nicole is an equity, inclusion, and belonging advocate for the underserved women and POC communities. A cultural change agent, she is a founding member of MasterCard's first business resources group, LEAD, leveraging employees of African descent, and created their first faculty externship program with Howard University. This partnership provides real-time exposure for HBCU students, to the data science and technology field. Welcome, Nicole. Yeah. Latoya West Blackwood is a respected publishing and communications consultant with over 15 years of experience in the cultural and creative industries. Her work and advocacy efforts focus on using reading and literacy as tools for transformation, sustainable development, and social justice. During her tenure as chairperson of the Book Industry Association of Jamaica, Latoya was awarded as the Yale School of Management International Publishing Leader for Book Publishing for her work in the areas of access to education for marginalized groups, research to support the production of high quality, culturally relevant content for early grade readers, and youth civic engagement. Again, welcome Latoya and welcome Nicole. So glad to have you, you. both on the call. Thank, Thank you. you. So excited to be here. <laughs> We're so excited to have you both. Let's kick things off. Latoya, can you answer, show, tell us where, where were you with your career prior to attending the program? Wow, so it, it seems like so long ago, but it's very recent uh, in the scheme of things. So I would say that I was mid-level approaching senior 
And also, interestingly, it was a period when I just led the, the Book Industry Association of Jamaica mm -hmm. to becoming the first member of the International Publishers Association from the English-speaking Caribbean. So that was a, a big deal. And it was like, you know, what's the, the next step? You have done this, but of course, there's always room for personal growth along with professional in terms of broadening your network. And I felt like, especially as a Black woman, um, kind of going into a space that was very um, male dominated in the international space. I didn't know necessarily about this program, but I knew that I needed to tap into whether it be a mentorship or training, a community of, you know, especially women in leadership who would understand some of the challenges um, and be able to share some opportunities that were out there. So I would say that's where I was at. How about you, Nicole? Sure, no, great question. Um, I think for me, I was at a crossroads between being in the human resources field at various different levels um, in my current organization and trying to understand, I've, I spent many years of helping other leaders you know, strategically design their organizations or acquire um, other companies or build them up from a, a learning and development perspective. And it was an opportune time for me to kind of self-respect and say, what about me? What is it that I want to do in the future? And so I, it was a pivotal moment for me it was during COVID that I was like, I want to change, but I want to do something different that really can set me up for the future. And it was like, let me pivot out of human resources. Let me have the opportunity to think about going into the business. And I've always had a passion for kind of doing side projects of helping, you know, business analysts and business strategy. And I felt like, you know, it's an opportunity for me to like, you know what, take stock of taking care of me and trying to find some sort of programs that can help me kind of think through and understand my skill set and the direction I needed to go into. Beautiful. It's so both of you had you like experienced COVID as a turning point, a point for self-reflection. And I wonder if that resonates with anyone else on the call, because that is just, it was such a profound experience for everyone. And it is absolutely, it was absolutely a time for many people to take a step back and figure mm -hmm. out what truly matters to them and where they want to spend the rest of their time. Yes. So you mentioned looking at other programs, Nicole. So what other options did mm -hmm. you explore? Like, in executive education, but also outside of it, because executive education, many people might not understand what that really means, what that looks like, and how that might compare to other professional development opportunities like conferences or workshops. Right, sure. I think I was fortunate from being in human resources, I had the opportunity to speak to other, you know, to learning and development professionals or having coaches or mentors who can recommend something. And I was like, you know, I want, I want something that really speaks to me and, um, you know, and looking what Yale had to offer, the Yale Women's Leadership Program had to offer, it touched every key core facets of where I was at and what I needed to kind of get some insights into, um, but then also kind of grow and learn. And some of the other programs just really, didn't, you know, it didn't speak to me the way that the Yale program did. It was like, okay, how, I want to look at my learning, you know, my leadership skills that I want to look at, you know, how do I think things through in a strategic and in, in, in critical manner? And also I want to network as well. And um, this program was something that I was looking at and I always recommended it to other women that was rising women in, um, at my current organization and finally I said well what about me and let me just take this step <laughs> and let me apply <laughs> and and that's how I ended up um, really attending the program but I really I referred this program to a lot of the senior women and some junior rising um, stars here at, um, at MasterCard. Amazing did you have was it a journey to give yourself permission to invest in yourself? It was because I'm a caretaker and I'm an empathetic leader and I care about other people and I put them first mm -hmm. and never was thinking about putting me first. And it was a time to say, you know, let me stop. And literally it was a pivotal moment. I was like, I need to pivot that thinking because if I keep taking care of other people and not myself, who's going to take care of me? And so it was a really a self-reflective moment for me to take stock and say, it's okay. Invest in yourself, invest in your future. 
I have two young daughters who are looking up at me. And so ensuring that they can see what I'm doing, but I also have a very diverse team of um, tech hub leads who report into me. And so I also wanted the, the team to see what I was doing as well for myself. I support continuous learning, right? And educational journey. That's important for us to do that. And so I gave myself permission, Kristen. <laughs> And I'm so it. glad that you did. And before, <laughs> like, I'm going to throw it over to you, Latoya, in just a minute. But I overlooked in my introductions to you both that you mentioned leading up to this call that you might have some of your uh, fellow, your peers from your cohort on the call. So, <laughs> Nicole, can you give a quick shout out? We want to give a shout out to all the women who are on the call who are part of our cohort. We know that you're on the call to support us, and we appreciate that. You know, we constantly keep in contact even outside of the program a year later. So give me a shout out, um, Latoya and I, to everyone that's on the call to support us. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks, Nicole. Latoya, uh, coming back to that question of like, how, how did you decide on a Yale program? And this one specifically, but also executive education in general. All right. So I don't think I decided on a Yale program. My Yale program decided on me. <laughs> and I, 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 I say that because, as was mentioned in my bio, I saw this amazing opportunity when uh, um, YSOM had the publishing course and I applied um, for one of the awards that they had. Um, you know, it was a very tedious process, but I, you know, put myself to it, got my recommendations or references and I was selected. And so unfortunately the pandemic conditions kind of had an impact on some of the, that, the rolling out of that program. So I got the award and then, you know, out of an abundance of generosity, um, the team at Yale said, okay, you know, we're really sorry about what has happened with this other program, but here's an opportunity to pick from this suite of other programs. I was like, wow, what heaven am I, <laughs> you know, in? And so when I, I took a lot of time and I went through the programs, at first I was tempted to look at the business for creative well, I think it's creative perspectives because I am a practitioner in the cultural and creative industries. Um, so I thought about that. But then when I read the um, women's leadership, uh, you know, blurb and I saw the testimonials and, you know, spoke to people about it, I was like, this has to be the program for me just based on where I am at. Um, in my personal and professional development, this sounds like an amazing opportunity. And even then, I what I experienced wasn't even captured by, you know, what what's written up on the website. It was so much more than I than I expected, to be honest. Um, I expected the, the regular, you know, I've been to leadership programs before. I knew that this is Yale, so the standard would be higher, but it even surpassed my highest expectations, to be honest with you. Um, and so, you know, I would say that the program chose me and I'm, I'm very, very happy about that. And, you know, just recommending it, I can do it with so much authenticity um, and, and do it with so much enthusiasm because how it has impacted me. But I know we'll get to, to that part later on. <laughs> we have actually, so I want to key into some of the um, so some of what you took away from the program and brought with you uh, back into your workplace and how you've seen mm -hmm. your experience on campus play out at work and at home. We did get a few questions in the chat about how does this program's, um, what do, this material, what this program covers, how does it impact those who work in a government space? And I just want to say as a mm -hmm. lead in to discussing what uh, you might experience in the program is that in the past when we've hosted employees who are of the government or of the government sector, um, they've really um, taken away a lot of value in the sessions on influence and persuasion, negotiation, as well right. as executive decision-making um, and how to like balance the needs of different stakeholders and manage the needs of different stakeholders. Uh, just to like throw it to you, Latoya, you said that there were some things that you're, that you're you're putting into practice now from the program, still a year out. Can you talk about mm -hmm. what some of those things might be? 
So I, I, you know, throwing to your point and the comments that are coming up in the chat, I don't necessarily work in the government, but based on what I do and the projects um, have national impact and regional, I do a lot of public-private partnership um, projects. And what I would say coming out of the the opportunity through this training is that we had some really amazing sessions on things ranging from emotional intelligence and I don't mean just the buzzword angle of it but really going deep into into it and and a lot of self-reflection there were practical tools because we did get access to an online platform that you know um, gave us different exercises and and activities um, to do so we had some that asked us to kind of look at our leadership we got some questions at test and then it generated the results and honestly that one <laughs> was very interesting because it, it was a lot of um, self-discovery um, you know finding out what are the things that you necessarily wouldn't identify as things you need to work on by yourself but they would pop up so I really personally appreciated that you know, negotiation, how to negotiate um, and stakeholder management uh, were, were also very important to me. And I think outside of the formal lessons, the, the, the mix, the diverse mix of the cohort, we were able to get from each other um, some really not just theoretical perspectives, but without breaching anything like confidentiality or so on. Um, we had colleagues and, and, and other women who were able to give us practical insights. Like this one time I had to deal with this and this is how, you know, I did it. And then we kind of turned it into a case study <laughs> right there. So I would say that the combination of the tools that were formally offered on the platform in the training sessions um, and then the insights from the members of the cohort. And lastly, the coaching sessions that we had, we did break out into smaller groups and we had coaching sessions that even drilled down finer into our very specific goals to each person. Um, those were extremely valuable. I saw your head nodding, Nicole, when <laughs> Latoya was talking about yes like the the leadership assessment or reflected best self assessment and a few other p components. So what do you, what would you what would you echo like the uh, from what Latoya said about her what sessions were impactful for her? Sure. Um I would echo almost everything, but what stands out is the self discovery and the self reflective moments. I mean, trust me, they were aha moments that I was like, wow, I didn't realize that I may come across that way or someone may perceive me or react that way. And a lot of times we have to think through when we have stakeholder management or we're trying to influence or persuade someone, it's the intent versus impact is so key when we're having conversations, especially with various stakeholders. And if you're in a role that's global in nature like mine, it's understanding that from a culture, because there's cultural nuances and differences, there's also the ability to um, reflect and understand the different stakeholders. Because during the time that I attempted this course, I moved from being in the global you know, HRBP role into leading a global technology hub. And so I was thrust into, now I need to understand um, different um, you know, government regulations and, and policies and procedures, understanding if I'm working with different um, entities or partnerships or account managers, right? Um, working with um, deputy prime ministers, right? So I was thrust into, well, working as an HRBP, and then now this is shifting and pivoting how I think. So it was at the most opportune time of just literally understanding the emotional intelligence, right? The decision management and how do we make decisions? Um, the need to kind of balance different stakeholders because across all the different regions, I have different stakeholders who look at things completely different, but I have one common goal. How am I getting people back in the office? What are my customer and employee experience, right? How I'm trying to create an innovative culture 
and it can vary. And so I say that I kept shaking my head because I was like, yes, it was pivotal moments of self-discovery um, and realizing like, oh, wow. OK, I know how I'm showing up, but I need to show up a little bit differently. Um, and the tools that you get from this program were, were just helpful. And it was real time. And the breakout sessions, even more so, like Latoya mentioned, you can take we all had different key um objectives or, or initiatives or things that we want to discuss and get some peer counseling um, and coaching, not counseling, but, but coaching. And I have to say it was just phenomenal to have the ability to get a diverse perspective um, from a geographical perspective as well, but then also across industries. So phenomenal. Amazing. The I'm I'm just taking a I'm taking a moment to to because you have both expressed so many wonderful things about how meaningful this program was to you. Early on, you both have mentioned like the the emotional intelligence, the value in it. But and so that would be that is led by one of our faculty members, Emma Seppala, and she's the faculty director of this program, and she brings that very that intentional um, guidance to how our participants experience the program. You both just expressed how you're managing. Um, you're managing stakeholders who you might consider to be professional peers or colleagues, but you're also managing people who are much more senior than you, and you're mm -hmm. having to navigate their their interests and their priorities as and how you approach conversations with them, how you and how you influence and persuade them. And so it's it's a beautiful marriage between understanding how to navigate those waters as well as how to prioritize yourself. Yes. So that's definitely true. Uh, so true. <laughs> so true. So I want to answer some, uh, like, go into that, um, that that networking component that you both keyed in on. That like the value that you extracted from your peers. Um, could you talk more about what kind of interactions you had in the program? What made them meaningful, and and how you stay connected after the program? Sure. Literally, what you want to speak up? Let me take it. Okay. Yeah, we'll you you right. <laughs> um, I think one, we have our own sort of WhatsApp um, group. I think we also have a LinkedIn channel as well. Um, and so if I need anything from Latoya, I can pick up the phone, I can email her. We didn't realize that we knew some of the same people. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> that work that my organization who she's friends with and is known for, for um, numerous years. Um, I just recently had um, a small business um, Black fashion movement event here. And it was, you know, someone who's well known um, that wants to do business in Jamaica. And so for me, it's a networking. How do I reach back and look at my Yale? And I call them my Yale sisters. How I look at my Yale sisters and say, hmm, I met someone in Yale who may have an opportunity for you or may have that network or may could be a great reference for you. And so keeping that, that um, the relationship was like easy to do because it was something where we both have vested interest in each other's success, right? So my hand is on Latoya's back, even though she's in Jamaica, her hand is on my back, even though I'm in New York. And so having that virtual relationship um, and continuing that has been something that um, we're invested. And it's intentional because you have to intend. We're all busy. So let's keep it real. We all have day jobs and stuff that's happening personally. But you have to be intentional when you develop relationships with anyone, both personally and professionally. And so I think that's what, what we took out of this, um, this program. Okay. I would totally agree. Um, and the, the key thing that Nicole said there is intentional. And I would go a step further to say meaningful relationships, because we all know that we go into different settings, um, especially depending on your level of seniority. And people might see you through the lens of what opportunities you can offer them, which I mean, that's a practical side of things. But also, I, I really felt that we created so many meaningful relationships in our cohort where, yes, we have been really good at those um, professional opportunities, networking things. But I also value the other side, which is just seeing the humanity in each other, regardless of our race, regardless of where you live, regardless of sexuality. Um, all these different things that seem to be dividing people in 
you know, the world these days, we have created this formula where we're able to show up and to support and value each other. And I think when you're able to do that, then it translates into, it, it actually just moves into other areas of life so easily because I genuinely want you to succeed. I genuinely care about you. Um, and that's how it's been. I mean, our the latest conversation in our WhatsApp chat is people are sending Christmas cards and, you know, like it 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 really is. I know when sometimes when people use the word family in workplaces or in groups, you know, people can be a bit suspect to say, hey, you know, hold on, we're not really like that. But honestly, I do feel like we have created not just an alum group, but we we have gone deeper, and that is that's something that's extremely valuable. Um, especially in today's world where borders um, you know, exist in the geographical sense, but are being removed in some other ways, and so I feel like there are even more opportunities for us now as women to be intentional, as Nicole said about how we show up to support each other um, across industries, uh, because that's what men have been doing for centuries, yeah. right? Yeah. Um, and I think women have been doing it too, but we ju we're just being intentional about stepping it up to another level. Yeah, and Latoya mentioned one of our cohorts just wrote a book. So Christina- Yeah, Padilla. two, two of them. Two Christina- right, Two of them, right, just wrote yeah. a book. <laughs> yeah, Christina has her book out on Amazon, and I think Jill is launching hers this week. Correct. I just got nominated for um, a community yeah. impact award for women in payments, right? And so hopefully, you know, some of my yellow sisters can join me in February and in Washington, D.C. So that connection... Booking the <laughs> So... Oh, you need to give us at least me. You need to tell me who okay. wrote the book. I wanna, I wanna <laughs> want to know the book titles. I can look up Christina and Jill, I suppose, but I also want to have the, a link to their books so I can share with sure. the case where they were interested. So a couple of people have asked in the chat, like, what is the average group size? Joanne answered it in the chat, but I just want to speak to it real quick. It's about forty participants. So it is. I, it's more intimate than a conference. At a, like at a, in a conference experience, you're getting thrust with hundreds, if not thousands of people and making new network connections. And when you come to campus, it's the same 40 people every day. And you come into the classroom, you listen from the same faculty that teach in our MBA sessions, and, and you get to have those real meaningful conversations. So by the end of your time in this program, you have these relationships with your peers. You know if they have kids or what their career aspirations are, what they're struggling with on the job or you know, like what their favorite hobby is. Like you get to have, you get to build a meaningful relationship. And our, our hope is that it sustains you beyond the program. And it's so, so comforting to hear that that's playing out in your experiences, Latoya and Nicole. Um, I will like, we also, one aspect of like, get, I don't know if you I don't know if you are if you keyed into this and you're in, when you were here on campus in 2022, but we do move people around when you're in our program. So we do encourage you to meet people be that like that group that you might meet on your first day. We push you to engage with others on day two and day three. So you are really building relationships with that full group of 40 of 40 women. Yeah, and uh, it actually starts before because what our experience was, I don't know if the virtual platform was something that existed before our cohort, but um, the what happened there is that we started meeting each other there. So we were encouraged to populate our profiles um, and, you know, we, we started there to get to know each other. So it wasn't this very dry and stiff oh, hi, I'm Professor X <laughs> from, you know, somewhere. Um, we we did put our professional bio and interest, but we, in the chats, we got to know each other some more. So when we arrived in person on campus, um, some of us had already, um, you know, met virtually and then the excitement was there to see each other face to face. So I, I like that feature. Can you yeah. give some examples of, 
the types of jobs or industries of some of the people in your cohort, just to give those who are on the call an idea of the like the the professional diversity or the geographic diversity even of people who come to this course? Sure. Um, you had individuals who were from the Middle East, from Latin America, from North America, right? So I think it, I think we were one of the most diverse um, sessions and cohorts that you guys have ever had. Um, and Africa. In Africa, right. I mean, like Middle East Africa. I mean, you yeah. had people from all around the world and the Latin America and the Caribbean. You had industries, if it was communication, you know, publishing, marketing, healthcare, financial services, technology. It ran the gamut of the women that came into this program. So when we say truly diverse from a geographic perspective, but also from the industry. Mm -hmm. Agreed. Why, or can you provide an example of how it was helpful to hear from someone who was maybe from a very different location than you, or perhaps from a different, a wildly different industry than the one that you were in and how that might've, that might've, I don't know, inspired you or given you an aha moment? I think um, there, 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 I think I can, I can think of probably even two individuals who actually switch their career paths um, coming out of this program because they had a realization that, hey, um, you know, where I'm at right now, it's scary to do this, you know, we're coming out of a pandemic, but I just can't go back to, to being the same. I have to make this change now um, based on what I've been exposed to. I mean, I'm not at liberty to share their stories publicly, but I know at least two members of the cohort who had that that realization and acted on it. Um, for me, I will say that, you know, coming from publishing, um, which is is, you know, not the the dime a dozen um profession. Um, and especially, you know, for me coming from the Caribbean, I went into a room where there were women who even though we're from different industries I was able to learn so much from them um, in terms of you know how they view things um, people who the most valuable things I think were people who were operating internationally which I was just yes I'd worked on projects outside of my country but at that different level in terms of leadership and influence, I didn't necessarily have the hands-on experience. And so hearing from those women in particular who people like Nicole who have to deal with like people from different cultural backgrounds um, across time zones, you know, traveling, <laughs> like, you know, even something as practical as as hearing how she prepares to travel for work um, <laughs> and some of the places that she's been and how she's had to adapt. Um, it, it prepared me for even some of the things I've had to be doing this year. Um, and, and even if I forget things that she has shared, I can always message her and be like, hey, you know, I'm doing this. How do I prepare for it kind of thing? So for me, that was my experience. I don't know about Nicole. You could probably share. <laughs> sure. No. First, well said, Latoya, to be ver very honest. I think as I moved into to this role, I've had the opportunity, as Latoya mentioned, I'm going to Australia. I'm going to India, right? And, and so having the opportunity to have some key um, stakeholders and women who are in Middle East Africa, right? So I think about that region, understanding certain cultural nuances that I may not know. Um, or just having that resource there so that when I'm in that country, I can have someone that I can reach out to if anything happens. And so you get a different perspective by having a cross-functional and more of an international, more diverse perspective. It only helps you, right? You're not looking at things from your perspective. You're getting insights and you're gaining knowledge from individuals around the world. I think that's the benefit of, of participating in a program where you have such a unique, different um skill set and a set of women who you really can lean on to. It's important, especially if you think about making career changes. <laughs> you definitely have someone that you can reach out to and get yeah. some insight. What would you say to someone who does not lead a team? If they're interested, what might they get out of this program if, uh, uh, if they don't lead a team? 
I think you can get a lot. Um, that's a very good question because I come from a small country in terms of our population says, for example, and then filtering down into organizations and teams. The reality for, especially in such a small place is that not everyone will become the leader of something and we don't necessarily need you know, hundreds of leaders in in the sense of being the ultimately accountable person. Um, I think we need to look at leadership through the lens of how we create value, um, how we can influence and how we can create change, um, regardless of the title of your role. Um, and so if you look at it from that perspective, then there is so much that you can get from this program because really if you if you're committed to excellence if you're committed to developing yourself if you're committed to lifelong learning the goal is not necessarily yes you might have on your vision board becoming you know a ceo or becoming the head of this or that but if that's not your your deep down desire, but you just want to, to do good, you just want to create value, and you just want to excel, um, you can do that in any role. And I think just getting clarity about who you are, what you're doing, and how you fit in to whatever space you're operating in can really set you up for success. Um, I think that just in terms of your overall wellness, um, health and well-being, um, you know, having that clarity helps you as well. And then, you know, I, I, the practical piece in terms of how this program prepares you is that if you look at the makeup of an organization, the ultimate leader, the CEO needs a team um, at various levels who will help the company or the organization to achieve goals. And if you can really fine tune what you're doing and do it in the best way possible, then I would say that that's a win for you and that's a win for your organization. So I wouldn't necessarily look at this program as being some kind of exclusive space for um, women who are just at the very top but women who are looking to create change, who are looking to create real impact um, in people's lives, maybe using business as a force for good, um, if you're not necessarily in the nonprofit space. Um, yeah, and, and that's my that's my take on it. That is a I, I don't I don't know how you can improve upon it, Nicole, but I, I, can't, so you. That's what I, can't. Say. I can't improve on what she said. I'm giving her a hand. <laughs> <laughs> that well was a, said, that was a beautiful answer Latoya thank thank you. You. that's really how I feel you know so thank mm -hmm. you for that we have a couple questions here about the pre-program experience Joanne answered uh elo eloquently in the chat but I wondered if you two could provide some color as to what that your pre-program experience was like in completing the assessments and putting the time in um Nicole let's start with you Sure, of course. Um, for me, you know, how I approached it, my pre, you know, um, program mindset was I had to be open. If I really wanted to say I wanted to acquire some skill sets for the present, but also for the future, I had to be open enough to be self-reflective and understand who I am in the current state and ultimately where I want to go and how I want to improve upon any particular area. So if it was influence, persuasion, you know, emotional intelligence, whatever it is. And so being open and being receptive to hear, learn, and understand um, was how I approached the program. Um, that's the only, you know, that's one of the things that I could say. So put it, and putting in the time and doing that work, right? That pre-work is for you. Um, and you know, if anything that you want to improve upon, it's not fast, it's not quick. It's really um, deliberate and steady and intentional. Hmm. Uh, we lost you, Latoya, but you're, it's nice to see you come back. Um, yes. are, you, are you okay? I am fine. I think I had a disruption. I turned off my notifications, but it still allowed uh, another notification to pop up and it kicked me off. So sorry about that. 
I was for a heart for a heartbeat. I thought it might have been an earthquake because you mentioned no. like <laughs> you were experiencing tremors. Um, your country was currently experiencing tremors, and I was like, oh my god, it like we just lost her. Yeah, happened? we've had some of late, but it it was a different um interruption just now. So <laughs> I'm fine. Thank you. Good. Good. Yeah, you were talking about the pre-program um experience. I think I touched on it a little bit earlier when I um spoke about the platform so that was one thing um that was used as a tool to kind of warm us up to you know getting ready we did have some exercise that we had to do ahead of arriving um at Evans Hall uh and of course uh well for me it was maybe a little bit of a different experience from some of the other participants because of my track um entering the program so uh, I'm very grateful again to the administrative team there who, you know, helped me to coordinate bits and pieces, um, answered questions that I had um, in terms of, you know, just practical things like um, accommodation, um, ground transport, which all of that was really well coordinated. But for me as a planner, I'm always kind of, how is this going to happen? You know, I want to... <laughs> And I know I'm not the only person who has that that kind of personality. So um, I wanted to make sure that, you know, I, I understood everything and that everything was in place um, and understood anything that I needed to, to do for myself. Um, but it went really well, I would say. Um, and it was during the pan the, the, the way we still had requirements for travel in terms of testing so even those things, I appreciated how um, the yeah. team coordinated that. It was very easy, um, no anxiety whatsoever. So no, no, we all felt seamless. very comfortable. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that was seamless. Um, what was it like to step away from the office and your other personal responsibilities for a week? That was. <laughs> 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 okay <laughs> um <Yeah. laughs> wow well i know I'll, I'll i'll go first quickly but i'm anxious to hear what nicole has to say but so so i always get you know near fainting reactions when i tell people my whole self which is i'm an army wife i'm a spouse of a military officer I have four children. I have twin girls and two sons. And it's like <laughs> my life is a whole corporation separate from my business. So anything that I do is, you know, it always comes at, um, I have to really be very deliberate and support is always critical. So I'm really grateful to, our network of friends and family who always like it's not a one-off thing they always show up for us and you know give whatever support that enables me to then be fully immersed in the experience um my husband my partner in this life um really stepped up as well just to ensure that i could be fully present um not worrying as he knows i'm inclined to do about you know has this person been picked up you know <laughs> is this so he he had it and i had that level of confidence and support um from the business standpoint it was easier for me than i think maybe it is for somebody in um corporate at a higher level like maybe nicole and that's why i want to hear from her <laughs> Because my clients upper understand that I, well, I, I work remotely even before the pandemic. That was a part of my business model. And so all I had to, to say is that, you know, for this period, I really am not going to be available. It's not that I won't be connected to the internet. It won't be that I don't have a phone, but I really need to be present in this training experience, this learning experience. And so I'm not going to be available um, over this time. It wasn't that in terms of the in-person engagement, um, for me, at least it wasn't that long of a time where it 
um, had a major financial impact in terms of me foregoing any opportunities. So that made it even more attractive um, for me. I did, did not know that you had that level of personal obligation and just complexity. Uh, so kudos, amazing work. Thank you. Amazing work. How about you, Nicole? Sure, of course. Um, on the personal side, um, you know, married, two kids, I have a daughter that's special needs, and I take care of my mom, who's like legally blind and partially paralyzed. So I'm the main caretaker. And, and so ensuring that I had that support and, and someone can be there to, you know, take care of the personal side was important. And they understood how important this program was for me. So that was kind of like some some finagling, right, to, to kind of get through um, getting everything to just be in decency and order and to be okay for me not to think about that. Because I was moving from one role to the next, the first day there was a little bit of anxiety, right? Because I'm new and I was hired, I had hired new team members. So we all were new in our role. And so I'll be fully transparent. I was like, oh my God, how can I make sure I'm intentionally a hundred percent present, right? And then I thought about it, I was like, okay, this is not a cheap cost. <laughs> this mm -hmm. program is not cheap. So therefore, I had to make up in my mind that I was going to be present. And um, I had a manager who was supportive and who understood that um, and, and, and reduced any sort of um, interference or any interactions where I may be needed. So I had that support. But that first day, it was it was a little bit you know, uneasy for me because I felt the need that I had to respond to everything. And after that, I was like, you know what? This is it. I'm not doing it. I am going to be fully present. So I had to be intentional to do that because I wanted to get and maximize the most that I can in this program. Did you have to justify the cost to your employer or did you qualify for employer reimbursement, Nicole? Um, no, they support, you know, I had, again, new manager who supported what it is I was trying to do and knew I was moving for another role. So my organization paid for it. Incredible. And Latour, you were extra special circumstance where we you uh, you were given an award. Um, did want to mention that we do have people who um, do are provided employer reimbursement uh, through their organizations, and if not the cost, then the time away from the job. Some sometimes you have to make that justification to your either your direct superior, the rest of your mm -hmm. team, perhaps it's mm -hmm. board members. I know Rachel linked earlier to a justification letter. We will be sharing that justification letter to, uh, with you in the post-webinar email that everyone will receive. And that's just another resource to, to help give you some language to guide a conversation with those different, different people in your life around um, doing what Latoya and Nicole just said about giving yeah. you the time and the space to really uh, take in everything that this program gives you and really yeah. be present intentional. I love that with that intentionality. So we have, a, we have approximately, I want to say eight more minutes because I know I think it, Nicole, you have like a hard step at noon. So we have just eight more minutes left with these, with these two. If there are any other questions, please send them our way. Um, one other question that we've received in the chat a couple of times is about a certificate. This program does confer a certificate of completion, and we do provide guidance as to how to add that to your LinkedIn profile. So when you're making other network connections, a future employer is sizing you up, you can they can see your participation listed on your LinkedIn profile. Latoya, Nicole, do you have any questions for, for me that you'd like me to answer? Do you have any questions for one another? Out of curiosity. Well, we talk almost every <laughs> other day, every week. <laughs> so I don't think I have any questions for her. Other than I wanted to just congratulate her on that, um, you know, nomination Thank uh, you. for that award. I, I personally, it's just been fulfilling looking at all the women in our cohort and some of course I see in touch with more than others and just seeing everyone's growth um in yeah. real ways um yeah. it, it really it, it's really something to behold and knowing that 
that is coming from this experience in large part. Of course, you know, there are other factors, people's own motivation, hard work, et cetera. Yeah. But I, yeah, it's just been really good to, to watch. I don't think I have any questions for the team. Um, I, well, the only question I would probably have for the team is, you know, what has the program looked like since our cohort um, in terms of the numbers? Um, I've seen some exciting posts on LinkedIn you know, where where different cohorts have spoken about the program and its impact. But and I think she froze. Good. I thought it was me. So I think Latoya did freeze. <laughs> Let's broke. give her a minute. Let's give her a second to see if she comes back. Yeah. Sorry about that. My my yeah. it's still allowing calls to come through. Um <laughs> unfortunately I'm not sure why. But I'm here. Did you hear my question earlier? If could, if could you repeat it? So I was just asking um for subsequent cohorts mm -hmm. um what has it looked like in terms of any exciting observations whether growth in numbers impacts yeah. So I since since you all came just a year ago in June there have not been significant changes to how we structure the program. We preserve the programs. We kept the program uh, participant size, 40, 45 people. Um, so that remains consistent. We're very, in, speaking of intentional, we're very intentional with that because we want to preserve that intimate experience. Um, I Like the sessions are pretty consistent and who um, in the faculty that teach, there might be some new faces, I would say like, so the topics being taught are consistent. There might be some new faculty teaching them. We love our faculty and we're and we're so excited to host uh, folks like Rodrigo uh, Canales, mm -hmm. who led the innovation and experimentation sessions that mm -hmm. you took. Heidi Brooks yeah. uh, speaks Heidi, in our, yeah. in our yeah. session now about create, building courageous communities. That's, she focuses heavily on team building and building. I reached out to her too as well, Christian, just so that you know. So just the participants know the professors are available to you afterwards when you need them. That's what I also love. Sorry to interrupt that. <laughs> no, please interrupt. Keep going. Like we want to hear about your experience. Yeah, I had you know a, a couple of things I was trying to work through um, at work, and and reaching out to to Dr. Brooks was phenomenal. Right, it was helpful and gave me some insight. So that's what I love. It's the access. It's the you know the continuity. It's the support and care about us. Not just we was just you know, this cohort, you still care about us and want to see us succeed after the program. And that to me is um, what makes it special. Yes. I, that is a wonderful thing to hear because that is something that we really, we really do hope to accomplish um, in, in building an experience in a program for, for participants here at Yale. Yeah. Uh, well, I'm, I haven't been able to like, of course, read the comments while sharing but i just wanted to just um thank everybody who who took the time to to join and i hope that what between myself and nicole have shared um will compel you to give this program a try um you won't regret it <laughs> not, not at all if you want to reach out to us you can contact us through our linkedin yes um, we're both on linkedin additional questions we're both on linkedin and we will be sending my contact information as well as their their LinkedIn contact information in the post webinar email that everyone re will receive. And I want to echo what Latoya just said that like we would love for you to attend this program, absolutely. But we also are we also completely understand that your path may lead you in a different direction. So we're so grateful that you came here today with an open mind, with lots of questions. Mm -hmm. We willing to hear this conversation. And if at the end of the day, you're, you come to the conclusion that a different option is best suited for you, we understand. Uh, and maybe maybe this program is for you in a couple of years from now, or maybe there's a different program offered by Yale that could be best suited for you. 
whatever path you choose, congratulations, good, good on you for like investing time in yourself and developing you. Um, and if you need anything, know that we're here to be resources to you along the way, not just in this moment, not just for this decision, but in a year from now, five years from now, we'll, we're here to answer your questions and be helpful. Just like Nicole and Latoya are experiencing with their with their cohort a year plus after the program, mm -hmm. like they're still supporting one another and helping each other out. And that's what we're here to do. So thank you. I'll and plan for our reunion sometime soon. Yes. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Invite all of us to Jamaica, please. Yes. Sure. Please. <laughs> thank you guys. Thank you Thank everyone you. for joining the call. If you continue, if you have questions, uh, we'll, like I said, our information will be in the post webinar email. Thank you, Latoya. Thank you, Nicole. It's been Thank so spending this time with you and hearing about your experience. Please stay in touch with all of us. We'll do. And we'll send you the information to people about the books. So Thank yes. you. <laughs> Thank you. All right. Thank, Thank you, you, everyone. We hope you have a great rest of your day. Bye. Bye-bye.